I want to start there. Okay. Now, here's the thing. I love the fact that I got to see the Philadelphia Eagles play. Mm. And ultimately, it doesn't matter at what time, but seasoned, knowing that the earliest I've ever seen a team play is 1 o'clock, mm -hmm. I didn't like it. Okay. I was, uh, were you not, I was done. By 2.30 in the afternoon, I'm looking around, like, it felt like it was 7 o'clock at night. By the time it hit 7 o'clock at night, it felt like I had been up for 10 hours. Well, that's because it was hours. cloudy all day. But I don't think the sun came out, but for five minutes on Sunday afternoon. But here's, what I did is I was over uh, at the 1912 Club, whacking Bloody Marys and eating uh, huevos rancheros and chicken and waffles and, you know, settling in for some football. It was awesome. 9.30, the game's over by you like... every single ethnic part of the country. I know, that's, that's, menu right, that's, there. that's right. And also, uh, we had uh, filet and egg sandwiches. It was phenomenal. Filet and anyway, eggs. By like 12, 12.30, the game was over. I went out and played golf and then came back for Packers Rams. Are you serious? It was so awesome. Maybe the key is being active because yeah. I was horizontal for the most part. Yeah, that's not and, good. And, you know me, like I pregame right. at 9.30 in the morning. Yeah. And in my level of pregame, you got to keep going and right. going. You, you know, or you otherwise, pass out. Exactly yeah. right. So by the time it was 12.30, and here's the thing, the game was exciting. We'll talk about the game yeah. in a second, but I couldn't do that on a weekly basis. Oh, I could. I was drained. Physically, I was drained just because of me not doing anything. So maybe I can get around that. But emotionally, it, it was a close game. Yeah. I don't know, man. I felt maybe the key to it is going outside and doing stuff. Yeah, I think that's a key. Oh, but here's just, the thing. That was only when our team was involved. I mean, typically these games start at 9.30 with Jacksonville against Cleveland. Right. You don't really have any interest in that game. I mean, you know, it, it's only no. the fact that th there was hype for this. Because, like, people were planning their day almost like it was like an event. Not, and it wasn't Bowl even a home game. It was draft. an away game. Right, exactly. And you're like, dude, where are you, when are you getting up? When are you going, well, to, the, so where different. Are you going to eat? I know. It was cool. I See, I think there's a novelty of it. I think you guys got lucky. Yeah. I think everybody out there that enjoyed it got lucky because it was a novelty of it. I, I Well, listen, and they won, too. Yeah. Had they lost the game, maybe we look back on our time at 9, oh. 9.30 in the Are you going to watch football the rest of the day? Uh, probably not. No. Well, yeah. first of all, you went out and played golf. Right. So you didn't even care about that skin's trying to I saw the end of it. Yeah, I saw the end of <laughs> you it. You saw it enough. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, in fact, Ross Tucker has said that London is ready for their own team, and they deserve one. So does that mean that every Sunday the London game will be 9.30 in the morning? That well, every they, week? They only have eight home games. So, I mean, you know, whoever. Let's say it's Jacksonville that relocates there. Their owner's trying to buy Wembley Stadium as it is, right, right? Right. And if they move there, they'll have eight home and eight away, you know, eight times a year. They'll be on at probably 9.30 or 1 o'clock. I mean, they could, they could do late afternoon games. It's 1 o'clock over there or 6 o'clock, so it's like a night game. Yeah, I, you know? I guess. I think it's cool. Do you? Yeah. What about London is cool? Well, the I don't know. I have sucks. never been there. Yeah, there I, I want to go there. See, you you don't know. You're just going on what you're told. You're watching TV and somebody's telling you that London's fun. You're thinking it's a lot like, of history. Musical there's, history. There's history too. in King of Prussia. You go to Valley yeah, Forge. You want I've your been history. there. <laughs> you did the Battlefield I've done Tour. I Valley Forge. No way. No way. You did a Battlefield Tour. No, I didn't do the tour. tour. At Valley no, Forge. I didn't do the tour. But okay. I've, I've run. I've walked. Can, I've, can I know. get you? See, this is my dream: is to lock you in a car. Yeah. Right. With me. Right. Obviously, and Chris who will film it. Right. Lock you in a car. Was this car, uh, carpool karaoke? No, it's not carpool karaoke. It's carpool carpool battlefield tours, <laughs> and have you just <laughs> have you just sit in the car? Yeah, we'll go to Gettysburg yeah, first. Exactly. That's right. where you went to college. Gettysburg, Antietam. Yeah. We'll do them all. Huh? Right. All right. Like I don't, give, I don't give a crap. We'll go fix Pickett's Charge. I'll show you Pickett's Charge. We'll go the high water mark. All right. I'll okay. show you it all. All right. And get you in these battle. And, and you know the beauty of it is that you don't get to get out, mm -hmm. so you're stuck in there. Right. Do so I get to roll the window down at least? Yeah. Well, you're not a dog. That, yeah. You know, you, you get <laughs> a little some, bit of right. some air. Exactly. Especially right. partying with you. But I mean, how there's, there's long? There's things in the air that I need to air the place out. You wouldn't make it until like the second stage of the Civil War. You know what I mean? You'd be done. He'd be done. <laughs> He'd be out of there. I'd be in Grant's tomb. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I'm saying. But anyway, it? now that'd be fun. Yeah, you know, maybe be, that's something for when no, the weather gets no, a no, better no. in the I'm, springtime. I'm not doing that with you. No? No. All Don't right. count me out right. of any battlefield tours. But I'm good with London getting Why? a team. As long as it's not our team. It's, you is know, it London cares? or is it just another team outside of this country? Isn't it a more interesting trip? To go there than maybe Jacksonville. If you let's say every every eight years the Jacksonville Jaguars are on your schedule in Jacksonville, 
Yeah, I could that go. That place sucks. Well, there are a lot. It's of... Southern Georgia. I mean, the Eagles played a Super Bowl there. No yeah. Eagle fan wants to go back to Jacksonville. You're right. But every eight years, they play in London. It's a cool place to go. Well, you're going to use that argument, though, because we could go through the list. Cleveland. Yeah, but Cleveland's not going to lose their team again. No, but I'm saying of all the places oh. that are better. Are you only using Jacksonville? Well, I would go to Cleveland. Is, is it a lock? That's got the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. No, come on. The food's better in London Indians. than it is in Cleveland. The Cavaliers, they need a coach. They just fired their head coach. Cleveland fired everybody. Cleveland fired Hugh Jackson. They fired uh, Todd Haley. Greg Williams is running the team. Tyron Liu is out. How many bounties do you think are on that next game, Reggie? Who do the Browns You see what happens when LeBron leaves? <laughs> Everything goes the to crap. The whole city goes to shit. It's amazing, isn't it? It's this is what happens here. I, I don't know. Yeah. I'm thinking that why is it Jacksonville, though? Like why Jacksonville? Is there no other city in the running, or are they not going to add a team and then just add another team somewhere in you the West Coast? We can't add another. We don't. We, we, thirty-two teams. You got thirty-two in the enough. NBA. That's enough. No, thirty. Thirty in the NBA. Yeah, you yeah. got thirty. That's enough. We're already at that point. We I need mean, to start relegating. Well, yeah. Cleveland's first up. We could do that in all the sports leagues: the NHL, Major League Baseball, you name it. NBA. Yeah. I mean, like NBA, aren't they going to add a team in Seattle again at Looks some like point? It. And then another team to add the balance. Right. Of so course. You can see two there: Lincoln, Nebraska. Great. And Seattle. The Sonics are back. Yeah. Well, I, okay. So let's get to the game all itself right. because it's taken forever. But that's what we do on the show. It's impossible to get through anything. I think. How happy were you? Well. I was happy, obviously, they found a way yeah, to win the they game. Win. Because, we're all happy they there win. There were moments in that fourth quarter where you were going, dude, are they going to do this again? They're going to spit Blow. up another yeah. game? Yep. And to Blake Bortles? Are Who's you worse than the other two? Oh, he's horrible. Yeah, he's horrible. <laughs> but, I, I, I mean, you know, the offense moved the football all throughout the day. I mean, Carson forced one into the end zone again, you know, into double coverage. And when he had Smallwood wide open in the, in the corner with an easy touchdown. Yep. And he forced the ball in a la Brett Favre again. And I think it's just going to be one of those things that we're going to have to live with that every now and then. Because then you see him do these incredible things like escaping Calais Campbell. You know, where he did the, you know, the duck right. thing. And, right. you know, comes up firing. He's awesome. It's the good and the bad. It is. I think you're just going to have to deal with some of those. I don't know what to do. Bad decisions. I, I don't. I feel like I should be more upset or down on the bad, but maybe the good kind of overbalances the bad. Well, the bad is that all these injuries that they've sustained. And the offensive well, line was like a, a turnstile of talent. Guys going, there were three guys, I think, that played in that game that didn't even start the game. And right. we're on the offensive line, Yeah, right? Lane Johnson was only out there like 10, 11% of the snaps. Yeah, he's, he's hurt his knee. But that's right? the thing, though. The thing with Carson is the fumbles come. You don't get that play that you mentioned with Calais Campbell yeah. without the fumbles. No, you I don't know. get the fumbles without that play. So, I don't know. I look at it like I'd rather trade a fumble or two knowing that there's one or two plays that he can make that maybe not many people in the NFL right. can make. That could be the difference. Not to say that that play against Calais Campbell was the difference, but no. you start to see that, and then you start to move a little bit closer to Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady, like that level. Mm -hmm. But you mentioned Brett Favre. This is a concern that I have, too, which is he, it's like, I don't know him, so I don't want to talk like I know him at all, but it's almost like there is this confidence and sense of, like, dismissing people and confidence. And it's not in a negative sense. Yeah, yeah. Dismissing people? I don't mean that as a negative, but in the sense of, like, hey, man, you know, you should probably throw to more guys down and stop throwing deep every single time. Mm -hmm. Like, those throws back-to-back -back weeks of Carson Wentz in the end zone, and, yeah. and I love the kid, and I'm, I'm happy that he's the quarterback times a million, but that's not having confidence in something out there other than you. That's, that's overcompensating. So you're saying that he's sort of falling in love and forcing throws to certain guys like Alshon Jeffrey and Ertz and avoiding maybe some of the other guys because he doesn't trust them? No, because the week before he threw to Josh, don't call me Sam Perkins. Oh, that's right. So it's not throwing to a specific talent. It's not following what is textbook as opposed to, I mean, he's Mel Gibson in uh, what the hell is the damn movie with him and Danny Glover? Lethal Weapon. Lethal Weapon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it's been a while since anybody's yeah. dropped a Lethal Weapon. No, I know. Even though there was a, there's a television show now. No, come on. You're yeah. not watching that crap. Well, my wife watches. Are you serious? Yeah, she watches it. it 
Wait a second. She gets a kick out. They just changed what? the star too. The one guy, the Riggs character. And Murtaugh. Yeah, is Rig it Riggs, and, Riggs Mur and Murtaugh. But Riggs, they've already booted the first Riggs. I it was that was, bad. I think it was Riggs was a little difficult to deal with on the set. Wait, who was Murtaugh? Danny Glover or, or? Uh, Murtaugh was Glover. Okay, and Riggs, and Riggs was, was Mel Gibson. Mel Gibson. So who played Riggs before they bounced him? I forget his name. I don't, See, I this don't know is his great name. because, and you're going to give us this Bohemian Rhapsody. Yeah, review. we're going to we're going to segue <laughs> from London, England football <laughs> right. to if Wembley we can ever Stadium, get back to London, England, right football. to Queen, right, which that, is the Bohemian Rhapsody movie. That this is the thing that I don't understand. This fly loves the podcast. By Seriously, the way. He big loves fan. It. Yeah, he was One, here last week. We're going to get it at some point. Yeah, here's the thing about Lethal Weapon on TV. Why? Like, what, what are you getting from this show? Uh, clearly, she's a fan no, of the movies. I'm not watching it. No, but you know her well enough to speak. Like, what's going on in your household with TV? She's She, uh, she has better taste, clearly. She likes, I call them stupid shows. No, no, no. Th this yeah, isn't a stupid show. Well, that they, it is to I, you. You're making fun of it right now. I agree with you. I don't watch the damn show. This is a remake of a movie. It's not it's like not even a remake Modern of a movie. Family it's, it's a or... spin-off of a... It's a series based on the original Oh, movie. my God. I mean, come on. I'm, I'm done with Lethal yeah, let's, Weapon. Let's, let's move on. I'm just saying, as right. far as the... How do we even get to the analogy? I don't know. So, as far as the game itself... <laughs> well, I'm, I'm good, with the, I'm good with the game. I mean, Jordan Matthews had a hell of a football game. How about him? <laughs> how the hell did you get me to well, Lethal he, Weapon? He was, I don't know. I really don't know. But that's why the show is called Derailed. Right, but Jordan Matthews was was awesome on Sunday. He was a, a key component to that offense. You know, all that time in Buffalo working on that Buffalo baby. Oh yeah, probably helped him right. out. Right, yeah, yeah. Get him yeah. focused and come back. What else is there to do in Buffalo? <laughs> well, didn't that come? Wasn't that how they That's got to that? That's from him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But they, I agree with him. By the way, you don't want to get banished. It's like you've been to hell and back. Mm -hmm. You've seen the worst of the worst in this sport. Yeah. In this league, and you're thinking to yourself. I am so thankful to be a part of something, even if it's not great, yeah. something good. Right. But they get the win in London. I now think, they have a, the bye. Right. We can sort of regroup here a little bit. We can they, get into that next they week. they got a lot of injuries. And the one thing that I'm, I'm really concerned about is you still have a quarterback working his way back from a major injury, now playing behind an offensive line that is going to have a lot of different shuffled parts. And I don't necessarily trust some of those components. Yeah, I understand. I mean, I know Sam Malo has, has, He's has played looked well. pretty, pretty yeah. good. I get it. But I don't trust Vitae. Do you trust him? Mm. I know he played well down the stretch last year. And I into feel the like there are degrees the of Bowl. trust, right? I don't really trust him yet. Do you trust him to, uh, I don't know, do you give him the car keys at yeah, you know, 11 o'clock at night and say, go go on a run to Wawa well, sure. for us? No, he's fine with that. I don't, okay. I don't think the guy does. I don't okay. think he drinks. But... Well, that may be even better, but he might yeah. take the car and go somewhere. Yeah, but he doesn't look like a, a slovenly guy. No, so I didn't mean from here. I'm come just back saying as far as... In good shape. Well, do you trust the guy if he says he's never flown a, f a flight, a plane before, and, and you're in some puddle jumper, and yeah. you got to land the plane? No. You don't trust him in no. that way? Okay. Hell, I don't even trust pilots <laughs> sometimes to do that. Well, oh, uh, <laughs> speaking of which, did you see that they, they weren't delayed, delayed, but they were kind of stuck a little bit? It looked like... They were waiting to take off a couple of maybe you know twenty minutes or so, but the timing was off, and it got everybody about the Eagles coming back on the American flight. Okay. And it got everybody talking about just how long you've ever been stuck in a flight. Oh, I saw you tweet something about that this yeah. morning. I didn't really understand. What well, I saw about. that. Okay. I quoted the American yeah. Airlines that they hadn't la they hadn't taken off yet, because Lauren Johnson, Fox Twenty Nine, was tweeting okay. live that they had taken off and following the tracker. And I guess the tracker was off and American cleared it up. And I was thinking, well, the Sixers were like 20, was it like 20 hours or something? They were stuck on the flight I think so. heading to China. Oh, yeah. right. You well, fly. You've never been stuck like that? I've been stuck like that. Two hours and was enough for yeah, me. It, it's torture. I mean, two, it's almost like, you know how you have dog years? Yeah. You, you, you have grow. delay hours, like one hour of a delay in, on a tarmac or, you know how they'll, they'll like push back and then they all of a sudden the guy comes on. Uh, you know, yeah. we're, we're going to be uh, delayed here as we, you know, fix the engine. They're like, they, but they pushed back, so they technically were ready to go. Why? And that's how they screw you. Why do and they move? You sit there for hours, and you can, they don't even serve you drinks. No, you move five feet. Yeah. They pull you out of that little tube that you get in and out of the flight on, mm -hmm. and then you start the jetway. to right. You start yeah. to move a little bit, and then you're stuck there for. My goodness. Yep. The wor Have you ever been on the two seat aisle? 
Mm -hmm. The bigger flights have the three, right. which is, the seats are a little wider. I was ready to risk it. Yeah. I was ready to just push the door open. What's the worst that could happen? I was like four hours, I think, the max, and it was on a runway. What do you think the worst that could happen would be? You're stuck on the flight. Well, the worst that could happen is the plane doesn't survive. No, no, no. I'm not saying once you're up in the air. I will take no, 24 hold on, hold on. hours in a plane no. on a jetway, on a, on a, you know, a runway delay just so I know the damn plane is fixed properly so we can proceed. Totally cool with that. Yeah. I, I'm ultimately, I, I'm not anti fixing a wheel. Yeah. Right? I'm not anti that by any means. You need to fix something like yeah. clean up something that got caught up in one of the jet engines. Go yeah, ahead. Yeah, yeah. What I'm saying is what do you think the worst that could happen